Bonjour, bonjour. Blessings upon blessings. Get in where you fit in. Invite who you like. Y'all ready for the finale? Well, well, well. Hey, Leaky, bless you. Thank you, Sister Sheila, for tagging folks. Hey, Tina. Oh, wait, I think you're tagging people. Hey, hey, Brother Eric. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Minister Myrna. Hey, Shay. Blessings, blessings upon blessings. Get in where you fit in. Invite who you like. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm so congested. I don't like it. I don't know if it's dust. I don't know what it is. But I've been waking up with my nose stuffed up. Hey, Maria E. Bless you. From Sacramento. Sacramento's in the house. Hey, Deacon Ronald. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I'm excited, y'all. I found what I was looking for. Uh, well, some of the stuff I was looking for, which had to do with um, what we've been talking about and our and 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 what I I used to teach our babies. And I'm like, wow! Like God is putting together the puzzle pieces, which is. Absolutely incredible. Hey, Erica, bless you. Hey, Deacon Lolo. Hey, Paulette. So get on in, get on in, get on in. Tag tag your folks. Tell them, tell them we live and, and cracking. We moving and grooving, huh? We are in the house. And this is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. So, um... Man, we have no idea how blessed we really are until we, we, um, hey man, Toy, are you going to, to save it for, for, send it to me and I share it on Monday. Blessings from Washington State. Hey, Liz, bless you. Hey, Day Shanique. Hey. Hey, Tanya, blessings, blessings, blessings. Um, man. Oh, snap. What did I do? Oh, tell me I didn't do that. Did I do that? Did I do that? I hope I didn't do that. Did I do that? Come on, Lord. Show me, show me, show me. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I thought I messed up. I thought I messed up. I thought I messed up. Um, how did y'all like that little uh, segue? For yesterday, hold on, let me see. Hey, Maria, you want to see the top of my hair? It's braided. And then I have a braid in the back. I'm trying to do something different. Trying to, trying to, trying to stay maintenance-free, y'all. I can't stand having to do hair in the morning. I hate it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Leaky. Um, what was funny, I used to do my hair. I might have to show y'all a picture. I wonder if I got a picture of back in the day. Uh with me and my baby. Me and my little baby. My baby, my baby. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Why is this not on yet? Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar, liar, fan. It's on fire. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Me and my little baby. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, people been saying that they haven't been able to. Find us. Which is bad. Sad, sad, sad. Bad, bad, bad. Right? Let me see, let me see. Oh, Snooky Bookie. Snooky Bookie. Chi Chi, are you trying to come to work, girl? Come on. Time to go to work. Get in your spot. Time to go to work. Time to go to work. All right, y'all. Get in where you fit in. Invite who you like. We going in. We going in. We going in. And I want to thank the Lord for, um, first and foremost, just really allowing me to um, Hey, friend, bless you. Thank you, Paulette. Hey, Deacon Will. Hey, Pastor Steph. Blessings. Um, oh, I found it. How cute. How cute, how cute, how cute. I'm going to show y'all something. This is me. See, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I've been, I've been a real unique person all my life. Huh? Okay, wait a minute. Let me see which one it is. Hold on, y'all. Do, 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 do. All right. Okay, hold on. I'm going to show y'all something. We're going to pray in. Let me see if this is the right page. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. So this was me with my first little bambino. My eldest son, Montego Bay. And no, he was not named after Jamaica, the city in Jamaica. He was named after, uh, it's actually Swahili. And it means, why is it taking forever to switch? Hold on, y'all. That didn't do right. Mm -mm, that ain't doing it. Why is it doing it? Okay, hold on. Oh, 
the devil is a lie. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That take a weird. Let me see something. Here we go. Let's try it again. That's weird. Okay, I think I figured it out. Okay, so this is me and my oldest son. And he was about three months old on this picture. So I was at the right. Hey, uh, hey, Rita. Hey, brother. Bo hey, brother Bert. Wow, it don't want to show up. That's why. I was rocking Shirley Temple curls back in the day. I've been, I've been, I've been a, a, a real different type of chick from day one. So that's me and my eldest son. And I remember going to school and, and, and me and uh, sister Toya were talking about this. People were like, why do you act? A certain ethnic group how do you act a certain eth either you that's you or come on man people be doing some real stupid stuff right they be saying some real stupid stuff father god we come right now in the mighty name of jesus and we rebuke labor and delivery father hold that baby in her womb until it is a safe time for her to uh, birth this child. Lord, we declare and decree that your protective angels are over that child. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. No worries. Angelina, I'm going to put her on our prayer list. All right, let's pray in. was really crazy is the outfit I had on was cashmere sweater and stuff I was wearing rich people was wearing and I'm a teenager I'll tell you about the story about the cow palace leathers one day but I was yeah we we was a mess Thank God for restoration. Amen. Spirit, amen. Father God, we want to bless you. We want to honor you. We want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for blessing us with another day. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit move mightily, Lord, to keep each one of us on the, the, the path that you have ordained for us. Father, allow this end time, noon time to give you maximum glory. Father, to activate our eye gate, ear gate, nose gate, mouth gate, and even our reproductive gates, Lord. Father, some of us need to close some of these gates down. Some of us need to be we very weary about the things that we've been allowing in. Father, I pray that you will give us supernatural wisdom and knowledge and understanding as how the enemy slithers in and takes control over daily things that we engage with father i pray right now that you will touch every listener and if they touch and agree with me lord they are right at this moment lifting their hands in surrender they are inviting you in they are asking you to download your spirit to decrease them and increase you father be our eyes our ears and our actions and reactions and touch our heart and hearts father fill us up with your peace your power your presence Put a ring of holy fire, Lord, around this house, Lord. 
Father, I declare and decree a hedge of protection over Sovereign Shepherd Building. Father, we come against every witch, warlock, dust blower, soothsayer, sorcerer, and demonic entity. Satan, the weapons may try to form, but they will not prosper. And I declare and decree that every demonic spirit that tries to rise up and stop and block the move of God, you will be severely punished and exposed. Lord, I ask that you will have your way. I pray, Lord, that you will give us this beautiful uh, 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 time to truly sit at your feet, Lord. Put your warring watchman at the front door and the back door. Father, let the floodgates fill the homes and the vehicles and the office buildings. We can do nothing without you, Lord, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, I thank you for giving me a rhema word. I thank you for giving me a right now instruction. I thank you for allowing me to have a vision of where we need to go, how the church needs to shift, how we need to go into the inner temples and clean out these uh, uh, rusty and dusty and cobweb spaces that Satan still has legal contract with. Father, I thank you for always being an omnipotent, omnipresent God, a, a right now God. Father, I ask that you will have your way today. I thank you, Lord, for blessing my granddaughter to celebrate her 15th birthday. Thank you, Lord. Father, you have allowed me to make it past 40. I never thought I would make it. I didn't think I would make it past 40, Lord. I stopped counting. The track I was on was on a high speed train to a high speed wreck. Father, but you kept me under your watchful eye. You kept me under your protective covering. You were my shield and my buckler when I didn't know what to do. And I want somebody to hear that they've been kept today. I want somebody to know that God has loved you and he has protected you and he has kept you for such a time as this. He has called your name and despite the beginnings, the tragedies, the trials, the obstacles, you made it. I want to thank you, Lord, for the men and women of God that you allow me to minister to. I didn't deserve this, Lord, but you saw. That my life could impact so many broken, so many lost. So many wounded, so many hurt, so many destroyed. So many that were ready to quit and give up. Father, you are so amazing. Beauty for ashes. And I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. And I give you the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Dang it, I wasn't supposed to do that. I was not supposed to do that. <sighs> Sorry. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. When something hits you. I literally stopped counting. You know how you say, oh, when I get 21, when I get 25, when I get to 30, when I get to, I stopped counting at 40. I never thought I would see the age of 40. 
I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Lord, why you got me up in here crying? I ain't supposed to be crying. 15 year old mother. The first time I got pregnant. I was 14 years old, y'all. By this big time dope dealer. And I didn't understand that abortion was wrong. And um, they put me to sleep because I was already three months. We had went camping. We went to Russian River. My family used to go to Russian River every, every, every summer. And my grandmother knew something. They was making fried, this lady was making fried bologna sandwiches. Hey, Crystal. Thank you, Liz. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Um, the lady, we, we, my grandmother got a cabin and everybody else was in tents. And the lady next door in the cabin next to us was making fried bologna sandwiches. And I smelt it and I started throwing up. And my grandmother was like, what's wrong with you, child? And to be honest with you, I don't even remember all the details, but I remember going to District Health Center number three on Silver and San Bruno going to get a pregnancy test. And them telling me I was pregnant. I was 14 years old, y'all. 14. I told my grandmother. Well, actually, my grandmother told me she knew I was pregnant. Now, this is a Catholic woman up and down. And she took me to go get an abortion. I had a little ding on my, my forehead. Listen, this woman was at church every week. She did the rosary every morning. Took me to go get an abortion. Then the second time it happened, I was in jail. Juvenile. They took me. You know them little, I'm a little kid. They had the whole band around the waist. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The little thing, the belt, and he got the little ball, and then he got handcuffs, right? And they had me shackled to my feet. And they walking me all through. I'm like, for real? You gonna embarrass me like that? Can you at least take off the shackles on my, I'm not gonna run. Put a sweater over my arm. Do something because you're making me look stupid. YGC, girl. And I went in there and I had a procedure done. But let me get back to the first one. As soon as it was over, I can't even make this up, y'all. I was laying on the bed, holding my belly. And I, when I came to, I immediately, I can't even make this up, started repenting. I told God, please forgive me. Like, I'm a kid, but I knew it was wrong. I, I didn't understand, but I knew it was wrong, if that makes sense. And I, and I asked God right then and then, Lord, forgive me. I asked the baby to forgive me. 
Like, why was I doing that? And I'm still under sedation. Why was I doing that? Because there is a true life in you, a soul. And so, you know, listen, I can't judge nobody because that ain't my that ain't my job. But what I can tell you is I've been in that predicament and that's that's a heavy place. That's a heavy burden to carry. Any woman that has gone through that cannot sit here and tell me that there ain't no psychological weight that's added to you after you have had it done. Huh? The guilt, the shame, the fear, the, 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 the tormenting thoughts of, wow, what kind of person are you to do something like that? Because it's legal murder. Legal murder called abortion. Huh? And I was like, I can't do this. I had a priest tell me when I got pregnant with my daughter to a border. That's when I left the Catholic church. Okay. Because I couldn't understand how are you telling me to abort my child? It didn't make sense, y'all. This did not make any sense. To me, none, zero, zilcho, right? And we have to understand that that's how the devil works. He, he puts people, I'm going there. Gina, you better tell them put their seatbelts on. The enemy uses people in positions that have powerful platforms that somebody like myself, gullible, don't know no better, go to them thinking that they're going to give me wisdom or walk me through or help me make the right decision. And then they use their platform to entice me to do something demonic and evil. And I, I, I could not believe that that Monsignor at St. Anthony's Church over on Army Street told me to have an abortion. And I'm like, wait, you're a priest. How are you going to tell somebody to have an abortion? Huh? So speaking of our gates, okay? Now, mind you, this was in 1986, all right? My son was born in 1984. Nobody taught me about protecting my gates, my reproductive gates. Hey, Tanya Faith, blessings. Uh, I wasn't expecting to, 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 to go into this uh, about the reproductive gates, but here we go. He, he is in control. I asked to decrease, told him to increase, and he said, somebody needs to hear this, especially what's going on with this Roe versus Wade situation. You know, so many people don't understand it is attached to demonic spirits. Okay. So let me, let me, we, we gonna, we gonna pause right there for a second. I want to give a praise report. Sister Crystal was at Starbucks reading first Kings. And a lady walks up, asks her, you know, you reading the Bible, what you reading? And she asks for prayer for her and her daughter. Listen, beloved, people are watching you. What are you listening to? What are you looking at on your phone when you're out and about? Is it to glorify man or is it to glorify God? She went in a 99 cent store and... <clears throat> This, I guess they made contact greetings and got into a little conversation. And the man asked, sir, what church do you go to? I'm looking for a church home. She said she was feeling like, you know, God, are you really there? Are you really with me? You know, am I really valuable? And he shows up and uses her to plant a seed. 
Come on, somebody. Somebody say, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Um, and then the other one, she said, there was another lady that lives in Alaska that asked her to pray for uh, her and her daughter. Look at that. God is using her. God is using you. Let him use you. Huh? Hey, Jacqueline. Listen. She also said, and I started laughing when I read this, Crystal, she stopped smoking black and milds. I used to smoke black and milds. Okay? I smoked cigarettes, black and milds, weed, you name it. Anywho, congratulations. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Because them things stink. <clears throat> them things stink. So, I want to go. That's our praise reports. And if you have anything else, please share, please share later. Um, Hold on. Let me get this because... If we started with the gates, okay, and reproductive gates, okay, um, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, let's go. See, this ain't nothing new, y'all. This is nothing new. Uh, all right, let's go to Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to go to Psalm 106. Uh, okay, there's so much in here, but I'm, I'm going to have to skip because it's too much to read. So Psalm 106 and I, I'm going to start, shoot, I'm going to just start at verse one and then I'm going to jump around. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can mutter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteousness at all times. I want you to tell yourself this. Remember me, O oh Lord with the favor you have towards your people. Oh, visit me with your salvation that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones. Huh? Six, I'm, I'm jumping. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. 
They did not remember the multitude of your mercies, but rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Listen, if you guys did not get me your uh, 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 miracle signs and wonders assignment, I need it for next week, okay? So please submit it. It's very important. Okay. Nevertheless, he saved them for his namesake that he might make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea also and dried it up. All right. Uh, 10. He saved them from the hand of him who aided them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his word. They sang his praise. But here we go. 13, they soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. When they envied Moses in the camp and Aaron, the saint of the Lord, the earth opened up and swallowed Dathan and covered the fraction, the faction of Abram. A fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. Okay, hold it, hold it. They made a calf in Horeb and worshiped the molded image. Thus they changed their glory into an image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their savior, who had done great things in Egypt. Okay. 23. Therefore he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach? Is y'all listening? I need y'all to listen, to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his word, but complained in their tents. They did not heed the voice of the Lord. Therefore, he raised up his hand in an oath against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their descendants among the nation and to scatter them to the lands. Hence, why people got shipped all over the world as, as slaves. They joined themselves also to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices made to the dead. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Thirty-three, because they rebelled against his spirit, so that they spoke rashly with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples concerning whom the Lord had commanded them, but mingled, mingled, mingled with the Gentiles, huh? And learned their works. Oh, beloved, we got to come out. 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 Listen, I need y'all to be paying attention. This is not a joke. Your whole entire lineage depends on this right here today. What are you going to do? He says, they mingled 35 with the Gentiles and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they set, sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled by their own works and played the harlot by their own deeds. Oh, my God, did you hear that? Gee, you trying to go out? Uh oh. Did y'all hear that? Did you hear that? 
Huh? They played the harlot and they sacrificed, huh? Their own children, huh? Somebody, somebody, if, if this isn't resonating, something wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Cause this right here, it breaks my heart, huh? We have adopted some ways that we don't even understand that it's, you know, it, 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 it's, it is not okay with God. It is not okay with God. Huh? Okay, wait, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay. Let me see if I'm going to share this with y'all because I need y'all. Come on. You coming in? Okay, go. Go get in your spot. All right. I'm going to share something with y'all. Okay. Let me, let me, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm just go on and share this page. So hold on, because I want you to understand your gates again. There are gates, okay? Reproductive gates, all right? Now, the, 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 the demon that is listed is Baal of Pure, right? The BLPR and the sexual sin of Balaam. All right. The scriptures speak very strongly of sexual sin and defilement of the body. All right. You need to understand that there is no other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. Sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God, right? You don't belong to yourself. God bought you. So you must honor God with your body. All right, I'm going to go. Uh, the Israelites, when they were at Akasha Grove, defiled themselves with sexual relation with the local Moabite women, right? These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods. They feasted with them and they worshiped the gods of Moab. Numbers 25, one through two. All right. There was a specific event and a, a sexual immorality associated with it. It was so severe that a plague broke out among the Israelites, killing 23,000. Uh, numbers 25, nine. Okay. Now. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor for the Lord your God destroyed from among you all the men who followed the Baal of Peor. Deuteronomy 4, 3. Okay, okay. so wait a minute. Uh, have we not had enough of the sin at Peor from which even yet we have not cleansed ourselves and for which there came a plague upon the congregation of the Lord? Joshua twenty two seventeen, right? 
let's see. Then they yoked themselves to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to the dead. Listen, you pour out a little liquor, you pour out a libation, a libation, you are offering a sacrifice to the dead. That is not okay with God. All right. Now, I want to go. Uh, do, 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 do. They ended up. <clears throat> The older daughter said to her sister, there are no men left anywhere in the entire area, so we can't get married like everyone else. And our father will soon to be, be too old to have children. Come, let's get him drunk with wine and we will have sex with him. That way we will preserve our family line through our father. As a result, both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their own father when the older daughter gave birth she named him moab the moabites mm, come on somebody there's a reason why god said do not intermarry or mingle with the moabites they were brought forth on earth in sin right okay uh Wait, 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 wait. So what was so vile about the Moabites and their worship of Baal poor that Balaam taught and caused John and many other biblical authors to write of it? This next part may not be suitable for all due to the nature of the topic. Okay, listen. Historically, this God was worshipped and associated with disregarding any and all sexual restraints extreme sexual practices and orgies baal peor like many was worshiped in the form of phileas to go one step further the uh the word pure comes from the root word meaning open gap wide or whole uh do these words sound familiar in lay, uh, lay, uh, uh, slang of uh, referring to men and women's sexual gates, okay? Um, scholars suggest that Baal Peor could then be translated as the Lord of the openings, Lord of the gap, or Lord of the holes. Huh? Okay. The tra transitional meaning and root association leads to a traditional understanding and very possibly the source of Talmudic traditions associating Baal Pure with exposure and excrement. Huh? Okay. Numbers 25, three states that because the people would uncover before the end of the rectum and bring forth excrement, we know that's feces, fecal matter, this is its worship. Therefore, the place was called pure. This was a uh, disgusting acts were associated with and used in sexual practices. Huh? Yes? Y'all understanding? Huh? Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. I know without a doubt that Hey, Angelina, I know without a doubt, I have come up upon Baal Pure demons ministering at the altar, called them out. Disgusting. Let me, let me, let me go a little bit further. Hoarding demons, huh? 
demons that will use human excrement as part of sexual relations. I'm not going to get too graphic, but it is absolutely disgusting. It is demonic. It is steeped in demonic activity. Let me tell you, uh, there was a person I was with that was in the pen. When he came home, he was like, man, because you know I'm nosy. I want to know all the stories. He said them dudes was in there on some real evil, evil, evil stuff. They would tell their women to eat certain food items and then pick it out and eat it. I know this is a little explicit, but for the purpose of understanding your gates. See, Satan wants to use anything God made to defile it. Okay? Why do you think these demons go after little children and they sodomize them huh because that type of trauma at a certain age gets in their mind and it creates a place where they can do mind control i'm not gonna go too deep into this because it's deep that rabbit hole runs deep okay now i want you to understand god said to protect your gates Remember, I, I teach there is a message within a message. Huh? The lady, Amber Chick with Johnny Depp, she pooped on his bed. That was demonic. That was demonic. How many people heard that? About the lady doing that put a little demon face on there huh wow ruby that's crazy that's heck of crazy this is not a joke people are really dabbling in some very dark and wicked wicked things again abortion you know why so many people, let me tell you something. I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm going to go there, okay? There were a couple women that looked more like men that were stating, you know, how dare you take away the right for me to have an, ab have an abortion? First of all, the way you look, look like you would never have consensual intercourse with a man. So how would you get pregnant unless you were playing God and using a turkey baster huh how, how, I, I don't understand that because the way you look you don't look like you engage with men huh your pronouns you're this you're that right no it's okay to laugh listen so you getting up and you want to be the poster child for women have their own rights first of all sit down because you ain't getting, you ain't getting, you ain't getting none by no man. So how are you going to get pregnant? But you want me to believe that you want to advocate for a woman and her rights in case she get pregnant. Listen, if God don't want you to have that baby, he going to make sure that you don't keep, you don't keep that baby. Huh? How many people in the world cannot have children and want children? But you so selfish, so you just going to kill a child? You just going to kill the baby? Huh? I did it. So don't be sitting up here. Well, you, how you going to talk about people? How you going to, how you going to, listen, I did it. And I suffered the consequences for doing it. So I can, I can talk about it because I went through it. It took me over 35 years to finally be freed and healed from the guilt and the shame and the trauma of aborting children. 
Don't tell me about it. it's a woman's choice. Yes, and I was raped. So what? I got rid of it and still feel guilty. God don't make no mistakes. That child could have start to transform my life forever. Had me doing different stuff. People, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Pat, uh, what's his name? Pat Robertson. Um, uh, is that his name? I think his name is, he's an old guy. Hold on, let me see if I can find him. He was, he, his mother was raped. And she was, not him. Uh, what's the other dude's name? Um, oh, my God. He, what's his name? He looks like him. Not Pat Robertson. The other dude. Um, James. James something. Is it James? They on TV. Him and his wife. Uh, older. James. Uh, TV pastor. Who, what's his name, y'all? What's his name? James. Let me see. Let me see. If I can figure this out. Anywho. He, um. Because he's been on a long time. Come on, I know I'm gonna find him real quick. Not Charles Stanley. What is his name? Not Olsen. Come on, y'all, help me out here. Help me out. He's him and his wife, the minister. They always digging wells. Uh, shoot. What is that man's name? Anywho, he, okay, Lord, I need you to help me. Can you show him to me? He, um, he gave a whole testimony. He said the mom ended up Having this babe, she was a victim of rape. And she he kept she kept the baby. And this man turned out to be a mighty vessel. For the kingdom of God. Mighty vessel for the kingdom of God. And loves the Lord. Pat Roberts. Okay, let's try that. No, I think his name is James. James Robinson. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think you got it. Let me see. Uh, pastor. All right, y'all. No, that ain't him. Pat Robinson. What is that man's name? That's not him. Um, dang it. What is that guy's name? Come on, Lord. Help me, help me. Help me, help me. In the name of Jesus, you're going to help me find him. No, not Pat Robertson. That's the dude. He's His wife is, they're like from Virginia, Kentucky or something. And he's always crying. He always gets emotional. Uh, what is 
Lord. Wow, Father, you really going to do me like that? Let me see. Not Andrew Womack. Oh, it's a man. He's an older man. He's been on forever. He, um, he got his own little show. Him and his wife. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to have to give up my search. This stinks. This is terrible. Um, and as soon as I say it, y'all gonna be like, oh, we know who that is. Um, oh, Jesus. Well, well, well. This stinks. I can't think of what is his name. No, that ain't him either. Uh, James Robers Robertson. Here we go, y'all. Let me show you. I knew I was going to, Laura wasn't going to let me down. Here, I'm going to show y'all a picture. No, that was, um, wait, where did it go? This guy. That was Betty and James Robinson. There you go. You see him? That's him. Okay. Y'all got him? And he's a, he's a sweet man. Very sweet man. All right. Now that, that mystery solved. Okay. So listen, I need y'all to understand. That the enemy is slick. So we have just talked about our gates, right? And the enemy wants you to think it's okay to defile your gates. You defile your gates. Somebody ends up pregnant. And then you commit a sacrificial offer to a deity. huh? Because uh, you're doing a, whether you understand it or not, a uh, demonic offering, okay? Okay, it, 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 they sacrifice their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood. What? Right? What? 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 What was that for? Why? They. 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 Built high places for Baal to sacrifice their sons and daughters to Molech, right? Don't you know? Um, okay, let me go here. Let me go here. Let me go here. Let me go here because I, I, I don't want my time to get away from me. Um. Y'all, the devil's slick. He real slick. I got something to share with y'all. So 18 of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm going to start at verse 9. Avoid wicked customs. When you come into the land which your Lord, your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells or a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead 
for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because these abominations of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from you, from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess listened to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Okay? That's a no-no, y'all. A no-no. Huge no-no. All right? Listen. Listen what he goes on to say. I'm going I'm to I'm continue because the Lord just said, don't, don't close that. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear according to all your desire of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire anymore lest I die. And the Lord said to me, what they have spoken is good. I will raise up for, you, for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Come on, somebody. He raised up a prophet. So you are without excuse. You don't need to go and, and, and go to a soothsayer, to a witch doctor, to a, huh? You, you don't need to do none of that. Are y'all listening? Is this making any sense? Give, give God some praise if you understand what position he has placed you in. All right. I'm about to switch gears really quickly. Huh? I want, I want to share a, a, a couple videos because of the fact Wait, where's my, my scripture at? Remember what we talked about yesterday. I want to go back to, uh-oh, Kings. I want to go back to 2 Kings, where we were talking about the musician. 2 Kings chapter 3. Huh? And uh, chapter 3, verse 13 says, Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father. Remember, his father was uh, 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 Ahab and his mother, Jezebel. And what did he say? He told him, go get, go get your mama's prophets, the, the, the demonic prophets, the prophet liars. Huh? But the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Come on, somebody, connect the dots. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now, pay attention, bring me a musician. Then it happened. When the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him, right? Remember that. The musician can either activate a demon or can activate angels and the Lord, right? That was verse 15 and uh, uh, let's go to 16. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. How many of you really understand that demons manifest through music? If you know that, put the music symbol up there. If you have experienced personally music elevating your mood, uh, 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 pulling you into something that you didn't understand and 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 you know that it was triggered by music put a sad face and music together okay because this ain't no joke this is real we about to we about to we about to dig in y'all 
All right. I think I'm going to end up going over my time today. Dang it. That's because I missed Monday. Shoot. Okay. So listen. All right. I'm going to go now. I'm going to skip. He, he goes on and tells him in 16. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. He gives them instruction. And then, right, they go in uh, verse 20. They, 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 they offer a grain offering. And then the water came. And, 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 and uh, the land was filled with water, right? And 21 says, and when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and older were gathered and they stood at the border, okay? Then 22 says, they rose up early in the morning and the sun was shining on the water and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, this is blood. The kings have surely struck swords and killed one another. Now, therefore, Moab to the spoil, right? So guess what? The Lord was tricking them. So when they came to the camp of Israel, uh, 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 Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites so that they fled before them and they entered their land, killing the Moabites. Then they destroyed the cities. And each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it. And they stopped up all the springs of water, cut down all the good trees, but they left the stones of Kir Harasheth intact. However, the slingers surrounded and attacked it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom. But they could not. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce, what does this fool do? He offered a burnt offering, okay, upon the wall. I'm at 27. There was a great sign of indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. It wasn't, uh oh, excuse me. I skipped something. I'm sorry. How did I do that? Ooh, ooh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Excuse me. Uh, wait, wait, wait. 26. Let me reread that. And when the king, how the heck did I do that? When, when the king of Moab saw the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him. 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Now, they tried to defeat God's people. Watch what this fool is about to do. Then he took his eldest son. What? Who would have reigned in his place? and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. He offered his own child because he was losing the battle. So he had to do something desperate to go and get favor from the demonic side. Oh, y'all better catch this. Listen, remember what we said about the music. I'm about to share something with y'all, okay? I'm about to go there. We're about to go there, okay? Uh, 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 hold on. Um, I want to I wanna start with this. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna try to do this. We might be a few minutes over, y'all. Okay, hold on. She let me share this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, let's go. The landing in the front of the apartment building. Two of them. Thank you very much. I began to look for them with blood everywhere. 
The pages of Helen Baylor's life story are loaded with trouble, trials, and triumph. And I was running to get away from the devil. I was running because I had no reason to be alive. I was running. I was running because it was the only thing I could do. She recorded her first single at just 13, became pregnant at 16, and performed with Ike and Tina Turner on the Vegas Strip at 17. For a 17-year-old from the hood to come here and to see all the lights and the dancing and the music and the buffets and the lights, it was awesome. And to think that I had a chance to work here was even more awesome. At yeah. such a young age. At such a young age, yes. That same year, Helen's voice landed her a job traveling the country in the musical hair. She partied hard, then turned to pills to sleep, to stay awake, and to do her job. Finally, I made friends with cocaine. Everyone who needed drugs, even the 30-year-old players in the show, learned to come to me at 17 and 18. They knew I always had a stash of marijuana or hash or something. High on drugs, she still performed with Shaka Khan and recorded with the R&B group Side Effect. And I'm going, oh, this is crazy. So I had the baby, left home at 17, got hooked on drugs at 17, 18, for the next 12 years addicted, then got delivered through the prayers of my grandmother. That deliverance testimony launched her now legendary career as a gospel artist. The devil was trying to kill me. I had a praying never turn back. For more than 30 years, Baylor has traveled the world, telling her story of survival. Privately, she's prayed for the many struggling artists, like Whitney Houston, who lost her battle. The final cause of death has been established as drowning due to uh, atherosclerotic heart disease and cocaine use. We were praying for her. We were rooting for her. I remember once seeing her mom. Uh, we did a concert together. And I asked her, how's Whitney? And, and she didn't make a big deal out of it or anything, but it, like a mother, a mother, she looked at me, mother to mother, and said, pray for my daughter. And I just could feel sissy. All over, I could feel her. Houston is among a growing list of iconic artists whose mm -hmm. deaths have ties to drugs. Mm -hmm. Amy Winehouse, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley, and Jimi Hendrix still make headlines. It was around, but by the grace of God, we didn't fall into it. Nedra Talley Ross knew Jimi Hendrix before the drugs. He played guitar for her groundbreaking group, The Ronettes. How did you not fall victim? We didn't have people wooing us because we, we were family oriented. We partied with our family <laughs> at my grandmother's. So nobody did anything. And it was a time when the fear of your parent, your, my mother, was greater than mm. the temptation that anybody could talk me into because she would kill me. <laughs> what personal loss have you suffered to the drug culture? A big one, I think, was uh, Brian of Stones. Dated him. So I'd say that was someone that I did date that, that died from drugs. When you have the extreme um, success, can be a downfall because you get people that are with you that don't have your best they have a job. In this CNN interview, R&B okay, superstar to, Shaka Khan blamed those four. Listen to what Shaka Khan is getting ready to say. She about to she about to drop some real wisdom on this, y'all. Forces for her personal battle with addiction and Whitney Houston's death. This machine around us, this so-called music industry, is such a demonic uh, thing. Uh, it's it sacrifices people's lives. When she said that, mm. I sat there in my bed and just said, mm -hmm, somebody gets it. Somebody else gets it. Helen says there are demonic elements to the secular music world. However, the music business in the church 
is playing right into it. Yep. Turning gospel artists into celebrities with demanding schedules and audiences focusing more on the music than ministry. Church needs to talk about it too. Because it's not just the world. It's the church too. And if I have to be the one to open it up, oh well. You know, if I never get another call to sing at your church, oh well. I have to be honest. Baylor is breaking her silence on her latest trial in hopes of helping others. Her husband of 30 years recently walked out and she found herself alone, addicted to drugs again. Wow. This time with a doctor's prescription. I was just connecting the dots, just going up and singing and waiting to get to my hotel room so I could medicate again. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. And I thought my career was over. I said, wow, God can't use me. But a year ago, I got rid of Ambien and not too long ago, stopped with the painkillers. I want to come home if you take me. Jesus. Once again, the power of prayer set her free. I had signed up to go to rehab. But God said, I'm the same God that delivered you 31 years ago, I can do it now. Come I can on. do it now. Come on. And he did, just by me asking and then making a step of faith by flushing it down the toilet, just like that. Helen knows her latest testimony of triumph is a critical story to share. Prescription drug abuse is America's fastest growing drug problem. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, y'all. We about to go into this next clip, which I need you to understand something. God has been dealing with me with delivering. What is that noise? Delivering this message to his people. Okay. And remember I said, I had no clue that God was going to use me as a pastor. Janice, I don't know if she's on or whatnot, but Janice and Sarah and, uh, quite a few other young women that were back when I was with under my cousin's ministry. Um, I would give her, give them rides home or, you know, we, we, we'd ride together and I would be ministering to them about things not to do and not to get caught up in. And so I started realizing that God had a word in my belly like fire shut up in my bones and I needed to share it with the young people. And it's funny because our church now is full of young people and there are some el elder people, but these elders have a desire to want to learn the truth. Huh? Uh, I can, I can, um, let me see if I could attach it. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on here. So listen, I'm going I'm to show y'all the other one too. This one is, okay. So listen, so I began, the Lord began to show me things about child abuse, satanic rituals, um, the music. Um, I could not listen to regular music. It was right after I got baptized for three years. Three years, y'all. My family thought I was flipping nuts. I wouldn't watch TV. I'd come home from work. I'd go in, cook my, I had a house full of boys back then. I got six sons, one daughter, and a husband. 
You know, I had four dogs, two cats, two birds, a fish. I mean, we had the whole gamut. And I would come home, cook dinner, clean the kitchen, go to my room and study. I would not watch regular TV. I would not go watch movies. I would not listen to secular music because God was purging me. Okay. And then he started showing me things with the music, showing me things with the movies and told me you have to tell the young people because they're the ones being lured in. So we're going to go to the second uh, clip. Okay. Um, let me figure out how to get here. Hold on, y'all. I want to show you this little piece. It is, well, maybe I'll show you that later because I want you to really get this one because it's a little bit longer. Let me do this one first. It's like four minutes. Is y'all okay if we go a little bit over? Let me know. No. I'm going to do this one first. I'm going to do the other one first. Here we go. Let's go. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Skip the little thing. All right. Let me figure out how to load this up. One second. One second. One second. Here we go. And here we go. Go. The media it has been pointed out by many people is that I think maybe particularly Instagram, um, people look like they have a much better life than they really do. Right. So by design. Yeah, people are posting okay. pictures of when they're really happy. They're modifying those pictures to be better looking. Um, even if they're not modifying the pictures, they're at least selecting the pictures for the best lighting, the best angle. Um, so people basically seem uh, uh, they're way better looking than they basically really are. Right. Um, and they're way happier seeming than they really are. So if you look at everyone on Instagram, you might think, man, they're all these happy, beautiful people. And I'm not that good looking and I'm not happy. Wow. So I'm a suck, you know, and that's going to make you feel sad. So when in fact... Those people you think are super happy, actually, not that happy. Some of them are really depressed. They're very sad. Some of the happiest seeming people, actually some of the saddest people in reality. Um, and, and, and nobody looks good all the time. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, so I think, I think things like that can make people quite sad. Well, um, basically... just, just by comparison, because you, you just sort of, you, you, people, people generally think of themselves relative to, to others. It's, it's a, we are constantly re, re baselining our expectations. And you can see this, say, if you watch some show like Naked and Afraid, or you know, if you just <laughs> go and try living in the woods by yourself for a while, and you're like, the learn that civilization is quite great. It has a lot of it. People want to come back to civilization pretty fast on Naked well, and Afraid. I, I'm not normally an advocate of regulation and oversight. But, I mean, I think it's once you generally go on the side of minimizing those things. But this is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public. And so therefore, there needs to be a public body that um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is developing AI safely. Like, this is extremely important. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads. But Do y'all hear this? Artificial intelligence is more dangerous than nuclear warheads. Okay? Eye gates, ear gates, pay attention. And, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. I'm not really all that worried about the short-term stuff, the things that are, um, not, like narrow AI is not a species level risk. It, 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 will, it will result in dislocation, uh, in lost jobs and, you know, the, the sort of better weaponry and that kind of thing. But it is not a fundamental species level risk, uh, whereas uh, digital super intelligence is.
Uh, so it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital super intelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. Very, very carefully. This is the most important thing that we could possibly do. The shame of all right, let me, um, I'll share this one with y'all too. Now that I done figured out how to do that. Now, the reason why I added that in is because of the fact that we're going into, which we're not going into, we're in a digital age where our children are being sucked into what they're seeing. Right. I had a today is my grandbaby's 15th birthday and I had a conversation with her and she asked, you know, do you guys think I'm cute? Am I pretty? Am I and me and my husband just look like, wait, what? You know, because the stigma from social media, your hair. Your height, your looks, your popularity, how many likes, how many follows, how many clicks, how many shares, right? We, we got to understand that the devil is working over time to diminish individualistic beings. He wants us to be a bunch of followers, right? He wants us to be a bunch of followers of something that is non-existent. Follow yourself into pride, setting up for failure. Here goes the last one. And I strategically lined them up like this because of the fact that this man admitted, this was the video I used to show um, my, my, my youth group when I was Minister, uh, ministering to the to the youth how all these people were influenced and this is why it's so 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 important that we start protecting our gates if you have children start praying over their gates thank you liz Thank you. I'll tell, I'll let her know you guys wished her happy birthday. Um, you got to start, instead of bombarding them, what are you watching? What are you doing? What are you, the, start asking God to make them aware and just have small conversations. I talk to my grandbaby all the time, Janaya, and I tell her, I show her little snippets of how these young girls are being lured. I would never do that, Granny, that's stupid. I said, yeah, but that young girl thought she was talking to a boy on live, on, you know, and it turned out to be a pedophile. This young lady went to go get her whole body redone and she hasn't even grown into her woman body yet because she's insecure about how she looks because she's letting the world fulfill her and not God. Because God says you were beautifully and wonderfully created in his, in his image and in his likeness. Here goes the last video, y'all. This one going to blow your wigs off. So get ready. And here we go. To the back, and he said, "Brother Craig, I heard every word you said. You changed my life." He said, "I know what you're saying is true because I've been there." He said, "Right now, I'm in the most popular group in this nation. Right now, the group is called Color Me Bad." He said, "My name is Kevin, and I'm in that group. This was the number one group in the country at the time. And they song that was number one was I Wanna Sex You Up." on the New Jack City soundtrack, you know, some of y'all's favorite movie. 
And he said, man, I know what you're talking about because as we travel the world with this song, I watch the effect we have on the audience. We'd have women in the back want to do whatever we ask them to because of music. And he said, I don't want to do it no more. I said, well, I can pray for you. You can accept Christ right now. He, we began to pray. He fell down to his knees and repented. That night, he went and met with his group. Now, this is a multi-million dollar group. He went and met with his group and quit Color Me Bad that night. They were just about to sign another deal with Giant Records, and he quit and turned away from a million, well, millions of dollars right there because he wanted God. He wasn't trying to hold on to it, and I just flip it around and make it gospel. No, he wanted out. About a year later, got a devastating phone call. His wife said, Craig, you got to come over here quick. Kevin is driving his car and demons are coming out of him. Many, many demons. They are all trying to make him crash his car. I said, oh, my goodness. So you got to come over here quick. I got out of the car and before I could even touch the doorknob, I heard Kevin screaming, saying no. I opened the door and he looked at me and he said, no, not him. And to make a long story short, I began to deal with Kevin. And over a three day period. Kevin had 42 demons. But I want you to know in that three day period, I learned more about the spirit realm than I've ever learned in my whole life. The first one was a demon spirit called witchcraft, witchcraft, pastor. And this particular spirit spoke through Kevin and said, when they recorded that song, we came in the studio and prayed an incantation upon that song so that song would be a hit and make young girls lose their virginity. All right, I need y'all to catch that. That's not the first artist that the Lord gave me proof that they would go into the studio. Michael Jackson called Tony Matoyer, Batola, whatever that dude name was, uh, and, 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 and said they would do witchcraft they would do rituals over the record release parties they would cast spells over the music listen i need somebody to hear what i'm saying these words get caught in your head and you just you can you can play a song from 25 years ago and remember every lyric right the reason why is because they are demonically prayed over. They are, they are connected to demons. Huh? They admitted that before they released this record, they conjured up in prayer incantations. I, I need y'all to catch this. So you got a young daughter or a young son or somebody who really doesn't understand the ramification. Why can't I listen to this music? Show them this. Let's finish. Kevin came to and confirmed it and said over 100,000 girls had told him that it's happened with that song. And I'll never forget this one. I'm going to rewind that, y'all. I'm going to go back. That song, so that song would be a hit. Wait, let me go back a little bit. This particular spirit spoke through Kevin and said, when they recorded that song, we came in the studio and prayed an incantation upon that song so that song would be a hit and make young girls lose their virginity. Kevin came to and confirmed it and said over 100,000 girls had told him that it's happened with that song. And I'll never forget this one. Apostle Murray, we were... Had been three days my wife had come back from out of town and we just dealing with him this is the last demon we all know it was like number 42 and kevin sat in the middle of the floor and we looked at him and i looked at him i said right now in the name of jesus you come out all of a sudden kevin threw his head back and grinned and his the corners of his mouth literally touched his ears mm. you could see behind and around jesus. his teeth jesus. my wife was right there it's just i'll never forget that face like something off a, a cartoon or something i just cannot believe it have a demon that contorted his face. He looked at me and folded his arms. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. He looked at me and said, uh-uh, now what you gonna do? 
Oh, we. I looked at him again. I said, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out. He looked at me and said, uh-uh. Now what you going to do? Mm. I said, oh, Lord. I said, I call the angels of God right now to come and smite you. He looked at me and said, they're busy. Jesus. Now what you going to do? I stepped back. I said, Holy Spirit, what am I going to do? Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Craig, play some music. I told Kevin's wife, go upstairs and put on a song that I wrote some years ago with you on my side. It was one of Kevin's favorite songs. I said, go ahead and play that song. She went up there and turned the song on. And as she turned the song on, I watched how his grin turned into a frown. And when I saw that, I said, turn the music up louder. And he looked at me and he began to shake his head like this. I said, turn it up even louder. She turned it up all the way and he began to put his hands over his ears and scream, no, no, turn that off. And I saw he was getting weak. So I walked up to him and I said, now in the name of Jesus, leave. And he left. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that Kevin was 100% set free. He is a preacher of the gospel right now. 42 demons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on, y'all. Let me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where did that go? There was a young man that came to the. Hold on, y'all. Skip. Went to another. Okay, let me go and paste this one up there for y'all. Can you imagine you come into church and your pastor, your youth minister, I wasn't a pastor then, shows you this video. There was much more to it. I, I actually, um, I think I still got the DVD somewhere. Uh, was the young, was the man, the dude that, you know, experiences. He gives a testimony in his own words. And the young people watched this video and they was just astounded. Baby fat was big. They was like, I'm not wearing these clothes. Because he went on and started talking about these labels and some other stuff. And God had really dealt with me about what we were coming in contact with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a, a, a real testimony. I had a mother call me and it was late in the evening and she said, I really need you to come to my house. My son is threatening to kill us and said, when we go to sleep, he gonna kill us all. And I'm like, what? I know this young man. Like he's like maybe 15, 16 at the time, 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there. So I pop over. And to my knowledge, this was my first true demonic possessive possession deliverance. I didn't know I was going over there to do a deliverance in this magnitude. I thought I was just going to go pray. I get there, and when I walk into the atmosphere, it was like walking into a very hostile atmosphere. I could feel it. If you've ever gone over to a friend's house and the husband and wife just get through like having an intense argument, you walk in and you can just feel the heat. You can feel the 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 the, the, the anger and the this and and you like what did I what what happened in here? What did I miss? Y'all all right? You can feel the tension and. She was cooking and he was sitting in the living room and I already knew what time it was. So I went over and began small chit chat. How you doing? How was your day? How's this? How's that? How's school? He was being real dry with me. And I said, you don't look happy. 
And there was some exchange of words. And I said, you know, you need to let that go and you need to give it to the Lord. And I said, can I pray for you? And I began to pray for this young man. You guys, he had blue eyes. They turned pitch black. It was like somebody took a window shade and pulled down the window shades over both of his eyes because they went from blue to pitch black. As I'm talking to him and I'm standing there going, what the hell am I looking at? Am I tripping? Or is this kid's eyes turning black in front of me? That smile that he said. This kid smiled at me like that. And not only did he smile at me like that, I began to pray and read Psalm 91. He told me to shut up. He didn't say shut up in that manner, but he laughed and he was like, you ain't got no power. You can't get rid of me and began to laugh. Telling me you need to shut up because you don't know what you're doing, lady. Y'all. I was like, OK, Lord. Deuces. I'm out of this joint because what did you bring me here for? I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I here? I went over to the mama. I'm like, girl. Uh uh uh, and she, I could just see the fear in her face, and I grabbed my Bible, and I went to go sit down by the um fireplace. And I started going through, and I'm sitting there going, Lord, what are you, what, what am I doing? Why, why am I here? He's right. I ain't got no power. Why did you send me here? Why did you let me come here? I don't know what I'm doing. Can somebody say all demons will tremble and flee? I sat there and I, I was praying and I heard the Lord so crystal clear. Yes, Paulette, like the Joker face. He's right. You don't have no power, but I do. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You ain't camp, you ain't coming here to do it in Lisa's name. You did not come here to think Lisa has authority over this demon. You came here to cast that demon out in the name of my son, Jesus Christ. You have been called and equipped to get rid of this demon. Don't you know? I got this download of incredible boldness. And I walked up and I began to tell that thing, get out. You have no authority. Get out. And like I said, this the little demons started coming out. He started vomiting. He started yawning. He started uh, like choking almost. And then I said to get out again. And the thing tried to tell me again, I ain't going nowhere. You ain't got no power. And I looked at that demon straight in the face and I pointed at it. I said, I see you. And you're right. 
I don't have power, but Jesus Christ of Nazareth does. And I rebuke you in his name. Let him go. This thing started manifesting in his throat. He started choking and his eyes was rolling in the back of his head and he was blinking, blinking, blinking. And the Lord started telling me, tell his parents to tell him they love him. That Jesus loves him. So do you. And I began to speak. We love you. Jesus loves you. Let him go. Jesus loves him. Let him go. Jesus loves him. Let him go. And he started putting his, just like, just like that video, he put his hands over his ears and he starts screaming at me. Shut up. Shut up. Stop talking to me. Shut up. Leave me alone. Shut up. Get out. Get away from me. And I said, listen, I'm not going nowhere till you lose him in the name of Jesus. Tears began running down this young man's face, his mom's face, his dad's face, my face. And I'm rebuking and I'm not going nowhere. And you're going to let this child go. The blood of Jesus is against you. And the next thing you know, he started really vomiting. And he vomited four or five times and he threw himself back on the couch. And Tears just were just streaming down his face. And he took a deep inhale and a, a, a deep exhale. And when he opened his eyes, y'all, his eyes turned back blue. And he started crying and he said, it's gone. They're gone. It's gone. They're gone. And the Lord told me, Go in his bedroom, pray over the house. And he had pictures of clowns and the, the, the demon with the with the with the scythe thing with the, 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 the deaf angel all over his room. And when we walked in that room, it was like a freezer, y'all. It was a freezer. That video reminded me so much of this young man. Those demons were so vicious that they were threatening the little brother. The Lord showed me there was a demonic animal that would run through their hallways at night. The little brother confirmed it. God gave me a vision of this. How many of you all know Pokemon, the little cartoon? Don't you know that that Pokemon character was created by somebody who created Pokemon as a uh, rebellion against his Christian parents? And it's demonic. And he admits it. The little boy had Pokemon in his wall. I walked in his room and it was like the eyeballs of this picture were watching me. And the Holy Spirit kept telling me, daughter, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. I looked, I'm like, I asked my friend, I said, am I tripping or does that feel like that thing is watching us. She looked at me and she said, oh my God, I thought it was me. I thought it, you know, cause I'm super paranoid right now or whatever that I was seeing things. I said, that gotta go, that gotta go. And as soon as I went to take the picture off the wall, I told her mom take the picture off. The I went to touch it and I rebuked that demon. I rebuked the demon. And that's when God showed me this demonic um, animal. It looked like a dog, had red eyes and fangs. 
right? And we found a pentagram in this house. The Lord told me there was a pentagram in the floor. That mama flipped that mattress off that roll out that bed. It's a true story, y'all. Went and grabbed a hammer with the claw thing. Went in the corner, pulled the carpet from the corner of the room and started walking the carpet and the padding back. And do you know, there was literally a burnt in the floorboard, a pentagram, a circle with a pentagram. And there were these little metal rings, two up at the top, one at the bottom. And the Holy Spirit showed me it was to stretch somebody out Tie them, tie them, and their feet. And she looked at me, and she she started crying. I said, uh, 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 don't you cry. I said, no, 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 we're going to pray. And we began to pray, and the window started, stuff started flying through the window. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was surreal. And all of this started because of so i want you guys to know we got to be real cautious with our babies they want to watch a show and you pick up on something that ain't supposed to be you know shared with them pray over them after you watch it Pray over it before you watch it. Ask God to cover you and your family. Tell God to guard your eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate, nose gate, and your reproductive gates. Because this is what Satan uses to infiltrate us. Amen? Did anybody get anything out of this week's lessons that you can now use to go share with somebody else. Because this is not a joke. The other big thing is with that video, these young women, over 100,000 young ladies said they lost their virginity because of a song. That should tell you something. That many people being manipulated, that many people being controlled, Satan ain't playing with us. So it's time for you to stop playing with Satan. Stop thinking he ain't got no power. Yes, he does. He does have power. And if you're allowing your eye gates to watch anything and everything on TV, the housewives, the, uh, 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 I don't even know what shows is out, but y'all get the drift. Pornography, huh? What are you listening to? What are you putting in your ear gates? Thank you guys for letting me go over. Um, I kind of made up for missing Monday, so I appreciate y'all. Um, I'm going to pray us out. Matter of fact, I'm going to re-anoint myself because I'm going to ask God to protect our gates from everything that was exposed. Father, I pray right now that anything that was not from you for you or of you, Father, that you put a, a hedge of protection over each one of your sons and your daughters. Father, we can do absolutely nothing without you, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, let your sons and your daughters be very aware, mindful of the type of things that we have engaged in. They, they may look innocent, 
but they're very, very, very dangerous. Father, I want to lift up uh, Sister Paulette, and I want to thank you, Lord, that you have your hand over this housing situation. Father, your word says, when two or more touch and agree, I touch and agree that there will be favor over her housing. I declare and decree that she will be the first pick group to be able to put be put up in housing. Father, open up a door no man can shut. Father, touch the hearts of the men and the women who are working with this relocation. I declare and decree favor over her life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I lift up Magdalena. I'm not sure if she's still on here or not, but Father, I pray that you will give her supernatural wisdom and knowledge about whether to continue to work or to take a break. Father, whichever decision she makes, cover her. Father, put a force field around her. Your holy fire from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Do not allow the enemy to get her off of her position, to cause her to stumble. Keep her grounded and rooted in you. Father, we lift up Crystal and we thank you, Lord, that you are sending people to her that recognize the fire in her, the, the, the Holy Spirit in her. Father, for them to come and just randomly ask for prayer shows how hungry the world is for somebody who can put a prayer through. So I stand with my sister today and I ask, Lord, that you will touch the lady Clarissa and Layla and the man in the 99 cent store. I want to lift up Nancy and her daughter, Gloria, who live in Alaska. Father, you know their situation. You know what they're, what they're dealing with. Father, I pray that you will wrap your arms around them. Cover them. Bring them out of darkness into your marvelous light. Show them favor in this season. Father, we bless you and we honor you. Father, we lift up Gina's daughter, Angelina. Father, the word of God will never return void. You are the physician of all physicians healer of all healer. Father, we know that nothing is done without your perfect timing. Father, we come against the things that are challenging her. Father, take the taste out of her mouth. Dry up her body from all the things that don't belong to you. Father, the triggers, the smells, the thoughts, the memories, Father, by your stripes, heal her from addictions, known and unknown. Father, let her new addiction be her, her motherhood to her child. Father, plant her feet on solid ground. Whatever that demon was that caused her to fall out of love with herself and to turn towards darkness and self-sabotage, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, continue to gird her mother, Gina. Father, we ask that you will hear the prayers of the righteous. Father, allow that child to remain in her womb. We declare it and we decree it until your perfect timing has arrived. Lord, I bless you this day. I thank you for the word that went forth. Father, I pray that you will allow each one of your sons and daughters to truly grow. Take us to this next level. Father, given us eyes to see, ears to hear, a mouth to speak your word, a nose to be able to smell demonic spirits. Watch our gates. Father, cover them and keep them, protect them. Cover our hearts. Father, I ask that you will loose your holy ruach, like a rushing mighty wind. Fill us up this day. Father, fill us up. We thank you. We honor you. 
and we love you. Fire in the name of the Holy Spirit. Somebody, he said, somebody's been asking for the gift of tongues. He said, open your mouth. The spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. The Lord is saying somebody else has been having excruciating cramps. Put your hand over your uterus right now. The blood of Jesus is against you. And those, those uh, fibroid tumors are actually shrinking up right now in the name of Jesus. And, and somebody, he said, you're, you've been asking him to touch your sinuses and your allergies, touch your nose. Touch your forehead right now. The Lord is unblocking your nose, your ducks. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Fire in the name of the Holy Spirit. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. It feels like vibrations and heat running through your body going all through your body. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord just said, Lord, I need a word. Your finances are about to shift. You know who you are. They're going to shift, receive it. God says you've been trusting him and you sowed. And, 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 and you're like, I really need you to show up Lord, because I'm getting desperate. He said, do not grow weary and well-doing. He said, he is not a man that he lies. You will be blessed in this season. There's a few of you on here that God is getting ready to open up your spiritual eyes uh, to see things in the spirit realm. Be very careful what you watch. When you watch things that are of darkness, you need to pray over yourself. Again, the Lord is telling you to watch your gates. Amen. Watch your gates because the devil wants to infiltrate. The devil wants to get in. The devil wants to, to give you a, a, a double mindedness. <inaudible> And the Lord is saying, there's several of you that you're not sure if you're having encounters, but he wants you to know you are having encounters. He's been tapping you. He's been trying to get your attention. He's been answering things that you've been questioning him. Receive it. Amen. Receive it, receive it, receive it, huh? Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I want you guys to keep um, the women's encounter in prayer. Tomorrow is the revival. If some of you can make it, um, and that's it. Praise God. 
if the Lord touched you, give him some, give him some love, give him some fire. Thank you all for allowing me to go way over. I appreciate your obedience. Continue to stay connected and please share. You know, the last 10 minutes of this or 20 minutes of this was um, very powerful. Amen. Well, the whole thing was, but you decide. Uh, but share it. Somebody is going to get set free. God is getting ready to loose people from strongholds. God is getting ready to do serious deliverance. And they're not even going to understand what's happening to them. They're just going to watch one of these videos and these demons are going to jump off. These strongholds are going to break. These contracts are going to be exposed. Some of you right now are acknowledging things that you did not realize that you were in contract with. And God has been dealing with you. He's been showing you to come clean, to acknowledge it, to get rid of it. Amen. So you should be given a praise report. Stop hiding. Stop acting like, you know, God hasn't done anything because he's delivering so many of you from strongholds and secrets. Amen. Keep each other in prayer. God bless you. I love you all. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Hopefully I'll see most of you or some of you. San Francisco um, at St. Andrew's Missionary Baptist Church. I don't know about live streaming. Um, I have not a clue. So, ciao. Blessings.